And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Morosaurus, which, as we mentioned, appears in the first episode of Prehistoric Planet 2. Somehow, we missed this one. It was named in 2016. Oops. We were still getting the hang of things. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised we missed it. Yes, but we do mention it in our book, 50 Dinosaur Tales, so we didn't totally miss it. We sort of caught up when we wrote the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But in good news, there's been some new research published since 2016 about Morosaurus. So, yay, we would have probably talked about it again anyway. <laughs> so, Morosaurus is an ornithopod iguanodont that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Antarctica at James Ross Island. It looked somewhat like iguanodon, but smaller, and it had longer legs. It's considered to be medium-sized. It's estimated to be up to 13 feet or 4 meters long. It probably was a fast runner. The type and only species is Morosaurus antarcticus. The fossils were found in 2002 by Fernando Novas, who found a partial skeleton in the Snow Hill Island Formation, the one we talked about earlier. And then it was named and described in 2016 by Sebastian Rosadia and others. The genus name means El Moro lizard, and it refers to El Moro on James Ross Island, where the fossils were found. The species name, you can probably guess, refers to Antarctica. <laughs> Antarcticus? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the holotype is part of the right hind leg and part of the foot, and it's now housed at the Museo Argentino of Ciencias Naturales. Rosadia and others wrote, quote, The Cretaceous fossil record of non-avian dinosaurs in Antarctica is strongly patchy and biased, end quote. I'm not surprised. <laughs> strongly patchy. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Apparently, the holotype was found about 30 meters or 98 feet below a theropod. Wow. Yeah. Just keep excavating, I guess. I presume it was like down a hill and not just like straight down into the earth. Because they probably wouldn't dig like a 30 meter hole mm. just for the heck of it. I couldn't tell in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> but the fossils were found associated with plesiosaur bones and a lot of marine invertebrates. Now in 2019, Matthew Lamana and others described more Morosaurus material, including more of the foot and associated but unidentified fragments. And they think that that foot material probably belonged to the holotype of Morosaurus, based on where it was found, and that part of the foot was missing with the holotype. They also mentioned some sort of ornithopod skeleton found near where the Morosaurus holotype was found, and that could be Morosaurus, but there's no overlapping bones to compare. The ornithopod skeleton doesn't have the hind limbs, so we can't know for sure. Mm -hmm. That's the one I mentioned before, the Biscovitsaurus. Morosaurus is closely related to Trinosaura, which is the only other named ornithopod found in Antarctica. I don't remember that one. We haven't really talked about that one. But Morosaurus had a stouter femur and tibia, the leg bones, compared to Trinosaura, which was more gracile. And Morosaurus was bigger than Trinosaura. In 2020, Jordi Garcia Marsa and others did histology on both Morosaurus and Trinosaura, and they found that the holotype of Morosaurus was a sexually mature subadult. They found the growth patterns of Morosaurus and Trinosaura to be similar to Gasparinisaura, and Australian ornithopods. And they found that Morosaurus could grow fast, but it happened periodically, not continuously, and growth slowed down as it got older. Past histological studies found that Triassic and Jurassic archosaurs grew in cycles, and they grew quickly when they were young, which means this is a plesiomorphic feature or ancestral for archosauriforms, and this feature would have made it possible for dinosaurs to live in extreme environments without needing important physiological changes. Because they could sort of just hibernate or slow down in the winter. Exactly. Or whenever they needed to, if food's running low. Which, yeah, usually the winter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, Morosaurus is part of the group Elasmeria, which they're known for running fast. And they include dinosaurs from what is now Patagonia, Antarctica, and Australia. And that shows that all of these places had similar types of animals. Makes sense. They were all connected back then. Yeah. There's a land connection between Patagonia and Antarctica. So you've got some shared animals and plants. It also seems that dinosaurs from the James Ross Basin are similar to the dinosaurs found in southern South America. 
Morosaurus lived in a seasonal climate, with winters getting down to almost negative 30 degrees Celsius. Oh, wow, that's cold. Yes. That's about negative 20 Fahrenheit. I figured they were pretty close, because I know, was it negative 40 it's the same? Yeah, very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it explains why in prehistoric planet they had it all covered in fuzz. Yeah, yeah, they were probably protected somehow. <laughs> mm -hmm. The area could also get a lot of rainfall, and there was a lot of humidity. So yeah, now we've done Morosaurus. Just seven years, maybe late. <laughs> yeah, there's updated information. Okay, good point. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 